Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Imagination Hat. This is Jude Valentine, coordinator of studio and public programs here at the Farnsworth. And today I'd like to share a work with you by Charles DeMuth. Let me share my screen. We are looking at um, a watercolor by DeMuth. And it's uh, very small. It's probably, well, the dimensions are 13 and a quarter by 11 and a quarter. And the title is Cluster 1922. Now, DeMuth was a contemporary of uh, Georgia O'Keeffe and uh, also John Marin. So early 20th century. Uh, he was born in Lancaster, Pennsylvania and in 1883, and he died there in 19... 35. And uh, I'm just going to read a little bit about him from our book published in 2020, Maine and American Art. And it features this volume features over several hundred works from our collection and was published in 2020 um, to commemorate the bicentennial of the state of Maine. So DeMuth's watercolor studies of flowers were based on observations made in his mother's backyard flower garden. In his reduction of flowers to geometric forms and the spaces between them, that's the important part I wanted to share with you, the spaces between them, the spaces between the shapes, daffodils and grape hyacinths appear as carefully constructed abstract patterns. So what we're looking at are these shapes inside of shapes that are, if you can, you can see my cursor here, shapes inside of shapes, inside of shapes. And the other thing that DeMuth did in many of his watercolors, he left the pencil, which some, some watercolorists are just shocked, you know, when they see, oh, he's got pencil marks, but that's really the under, structure of the painting. So if you look down in here, you can see that DeMuth has, he's drawn and then he's, he's used that as a structure. And then in some places he's left that white. So I'm gonna share my studio desktop with you and just show you some basic techniques that might be handy if you're doing any painting or even if you're doing some field sketching and you wanna really look for those, those shapes, what, um, what Betty Edwards calls in her drawing on the right side of the brain, what she calls the perception of spaces as um, one of five of the basic skills of drawing. And it's really also called negative space. So let me, um, let me stop the screen share and I'm gonna go back over to my other camera here and um, do, some, do some work with you just to show you a little bit about what this, what this might look like if you're working in, and, and it goes for whether you're working in watercolor or any other painting medium, including pastel. So what I'm looking at here is uh, a flat of uh, marigolds. And I've already done a bit of an understudy or an underpainting for them. And, and what I want to point out, if you can see, if I can show you, is this is a kind of a complex arrangement, right? But look at look at this area kind of up in here. And you can see a bit of the plate. You can see a bit of that turquoise of the plate. And you can see that the green. OK, a better example might be over in here, where you're starting to see the black of the cloth against the green. Or even over in here, where you're seeing the painting against the, let me get my pencil to kind of point it out to you on the screen. So you're going to see, you're seeing these, these little bits of shape that are actually defining 
the leaf shape. So it's not the leaf itself. What you're seeing is you're seeing this yellow shape that's also defining the leaves. And you can see it up here too, the white shape. The white shape is defining the leaves as well as the edge of the leaves. So you're working kind of, you're working both things at the same time. So what I'm gonna do down in here, I've kind of, I've already created a light wash. So what I'm, and I've got some empty spaces here. So what I'm gonna do is just start to kind of draw these very articulated, small, empty spaces. So I know where they are. And it might be a little bit hard to see. Let me see here if I can. Yeah, there we go. I'm going to use this pencil. It's got a, it's a wash pencil. So I'm just going to use, I'm going to use this to help me, help you see better. Because <laughs> I'm, I can't see it through my screen. So I'm, I'm thinking you guys might have a hard time seeing it through your screen. So these are just some empty shapes that I'm drawing that are connecting up. to some other types of shapes. And it's hard to talk while you're doing this, but I'll do my best. So I'm drawing the shapes around the shapes. All right, so now you're starting to get a sense of where things are. I am, I am also, right? A sense of where things are. All right, so these are just kind of jaggedy, edgy, edgy little shapes. And now I'm going to go into that area with a with more of a darker green tone and start to not so much fill it in, but use the understructure of the of the paint, of the drawing, excuse me, using the understructure of the drawing to really know where to lay that color in. So it's really helpful, you know, when you're learning, it's really helpful when you're learning any, any medium to see how other other artists work and knowing even just a little bit about their about their technique can really help you to see what they saw and what they were looking at so even up here i can i can kind of go in and create the work around. So kind of working backwards here. So I'm not actually putting in the color for the, the leaf. Well, I am, I'm working with the leaf color, but what I'm really looking at are the spaces around the leaves. Okay, here we go. So that I'm kind of working around the shapes and the spaces. And this is a really great way to help define and to help construct a painting is to look at the empty shapes, the negative space here, the back end, the darker color. Maybe more paint would help.
So does hopefully that helps a little bit in terms of understanding and coming kind of getting a sense of where things where how you can construct things in a painting or how you can look at a painting and see how it's constructed using the empty shapes that are that are either filled with color or left left open So I hope that helps to explain a little bit about Charles de Mott's painting. Well, let's take another look at it here. Just looking at it again in light of another understanding of, of how he might have constructed this using negative space. So just very carefully crafted, leaving shapes open, really knowing exactly where color is going to go, but also keeping it really spontaneous so you could still see, you know, some of the flow in and around like these gray piathons. You can see the layering that he's used. And if you look at other Demuth paintings, you'll see that this is very, very loose compared to some of the very almost cubist watercolors that he did um, that were very, very highly um, structured. You know, you can really, really see how he layered things and, and um, broke things down. So that's our imagination hat for today. Have some fun with your paints, have some fun with whatever it is you're working with and look for the empty shapes. That's the thing. That's one of the keys to, um, to really mastering um, any of the drawing painting mediums. So until next time, um, use your imagination and have some fun. Bye for now. <laughs>